Uh, that has brought us to our special guest. Hang on, I've, I've got the intro to this. Oh. And now it's time for Jesse's Man Crush. It's hit not the, hit that the, weird, hit the, bro. Hit the blue one, the blue one, the, the blue, blue one. one. There, there you go. go. Nice, it. Nicely done. Uh, Scott Rogowski from Fanatics Live. How the heck are you, man? I'm fantastic. Good to I'm the Fanatics stick. How are you? <laughs> Doing so good. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you may only see our hands at this moment. If you go to the top right corner of our window. I got it. I've already you, been there. Be you sure did. It. See, I knew it. He knows Come so on. much about tech. He Give was part amateur, of an app. Amateur hour? No, no, not at all. Uh, as formerly mentioned, he was also part of uh, one of the my favorite apps of all time, Privy HQ. Uh, look, at how, look at your cheeks. I'm not. It's not that weird. I'm not being weird it's about rosacea, it. Mike. It's rosacea. It is. Thanks a lot. Oh, it's, it's a medical condition. It's only would you rosacea. Make fun of me if I was in a wheelchair. No. Yes, absolutely. You would. You would You'd absolutely. You'd be rolling around doing your thing, living the dream. <laughs> Scott. I, I hope Mike appreciates my my uh, description, my title here. This is an homage to. Uh, so your description of me God, with on that the famous goofy episode, hair. Did I say who said I that? I swear to God, that he host. listens to every episode. <laughs> if I can recreate it here, this is an amazing moment for me. That host. He starts off with just that host. Who who is that guy in the middle with the goofy hair? Oh my God! I don't ever need to see that guy to break again. And Jesse goes, I actually don't mind him. That was actually before I knew who you were. The I just guy, knew you looked familiar. The guy pulls at Albert Pujols, Savage Patch, and Scott is yelling at some prospect <laughs> off the field, not paying attention. This is not a me problem. Don't you I dare like speak ill of Scott. Per my instructions from the producers. That, put put with me that. in with the producers, the you true idiots of the situation. I am now, I've moved on. Scott is on my great list. I'm, yes, thank anybody you. Who Don't you, you dare. Yeah, trust me. Anybody Don't. you admire as much as Scott, I'm not going to insult again. It's time. The producers, total buffoons. I will tell okay. you that right now. <laughs> yeah, well, anyways, oh, Fanatics is our sponsor for the day. Shut now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, not anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whoops. So, uh, Scott is, what's your official title with Fanatics Live? That's a great question. Uh, I, I, I believe it's creative consultant, perhaps. Oh, okay. Host. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been consulting and hosting, so that's 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 what I've been doing. That's pretty um, awesome, though, that I'm you... I'm not sure how to officialize it. So you got pulled in now, I believe I talked to some guys over at Top Set. You were buddies with... with was it Jeremy? Um, Mustache Jeremy. Jeremy yeah. Fullerton that you were buddies with, that you guys used to... I think Jeremy even mentioned... He got one of the first copies of Trivia HQ when you were working over there, and yeah. you used to work for Tops, right? Is that right? He got one of the first copies hot off the press. That's cool. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> wait, wait, what do you mean copies? I thought it was just an it, app. It is an app. Yeah, That's it's, a, it's an app. Yeah, it's oh, oh okay, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. But he, he was an early adopter is what you mean. That's I what I meant to say. Thank you. I got you. Yes. Uh, no, Jeremy uh, Jeremy, and, and so many of those guys are still there. I mean, Clay. I, I was working under Clay back then. You and, met Clay? Uh Sure. It's the guy who at the piano bar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Clay. Yes. And my buddy, Colin, I got a shout out Colin Butler, who was one of my, so I came in, I worked at Tops in 2010, okay? And I was one of like the lowest men on the totem pole. The first job you can get there, which is called editor, which sounds like a pretty big job, right? Oh, yeah. Basically, I was the guy, I was the guy along with my buddy Colin next to me. We would sit there and we get the set list from the, you know, brand managers. And here's the, here's, here's the set. Here are all the players in it. Here are the designs from the designers. Now go find the photos and plug them in. It was literally just picking photos for the card. But to me, that was like the biggest role, right? Because the card itself, the way the card looked, depended on myself. My, that is my, awesome. This is my artistic choice. I chose the photo, cool. cropped it into the card, and Dude, boom, the that, card was made. It was off to the presses. So, you know, uh, the fact that that's the lowest paid <laughs> entry-level job at Tops at the time, uh, I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't seem right. That be begs Scott, a lot of questions. Most yeah. iconic <laughs> photo that you were in charge of selecting. Anything Ooh. like jump off the okay. page? Okay, so here, here you go, ready? This is gonna be, this we're is bonding. Be great. I, I'm expecting sales of 2010 Topps Heritage to jump through the roof after this episode. I'm here. Googling it right now. Oh, I'm ready to yep. pump and dump the crap Topps out of this. 2010 Topps Heritage Baseball. Yep. I'm pumping and dumping. Now, yep. <laughs> 2010 Topps Heritage Baseball was a set, you know, every year Topps Heritage obviously pays homage to the set from, I guess, 50 years prior, whatever it is. Yep. So in 2010, I'm trying to think, I think it was 1962 Tops. Okay. That was the, the the design we were mimicking. Okay. So the design was the, the wood border design. What I did, which I don't think any other editor had done previously or probably since I left is because I'm such a card nerd myself and such a, I mean, collecting for 30 years, 30 plus years. My dad had all the 62 Tops cards. So I went back to the original 62 Tops set and I tried to find cards to match the exact, uh, you know, framing and format of the original player. So if 
a player, you know, based on the card. So if card 17 in that set, whoever card 17 to 2010 Heritage was, I chose a photo that would mimic whether oh. it was, you know, a close-up photo of a guy without a hat on. I found a shirt without a, a picture without a hat on. Or, you know, a, a photo of a guy with a bat in his hand in a batting stance. I found a photo to match that. I tried to match it as best I could with the photos I had available. That's, so that's a little Easter egg that probably nobody knows about. I was about to say, did, has anyone ever said, congratulations, that was so well done? Has anyone noticed no. that you did that? Oh, nobody man. Nobody cared. Nobody noticed. But that's, that's They fine. will now. for me. Oh, they're about to. They're, they're for me, yeah. me alone. Oh, will, okay, 1961 is the top set. Oh, now, now, now i got to verify this. 61 is the one that 2010 mimics. Card number one is Albert Pujols. Now you're going to go back and I'm check. I'm going to find number one. Was, yep. Hold on a second. Hang oh, before, on. I, before I get this wrong. So then it was 2011. My bad. It was 2011 Tops Heritage. So 62 Tops. On, the wood I was grain. working on it in 2010. It was released in March 21, 2011. <laughs> so it's the 2011 Tops Heritage set. It's it was all definitely together. the 62 design. I'm on I was, it. I was working on it. Mike but basically this. that whole set, Tops Heritage 2011, those are my photos, my crops. That's my set. I, I'm very proud of that set. I've always wanted to have someone on who did that okay. job. Okay. The fact that you were just happened is, to be that. This is pretty. I'll be honest with you. Me and Scott have come full circle now. <laughs> this is actually pretty ridiculous. I am looking at the vintage don't set. Don't you dare steal my best friend, bro. God. Well, I don't have any. No, I, I'm still happily married to my wife. And not thinking of leaving for Scott. But I will say this is actually pretty impressive. The Freddie Freeman is identical. Okay, this is pretty good. You can carry on with your whatever you want to talk about. I don't care anymore. Now I'm just going to be I got him. geeking out. This, is, pretty, this is actually pretty good. Okay, um, so let's. you've been collecting and you also own a shop right now in LA that is, uh, is it memorabilia, sports memorabilia? What is your shop about? It's primarily vintage clothing, hats, jerseys, jackets, t-shirts, and it's. And I would say it's probably 75% sports. I do have a whole band tee collection. I've got, you know, random tees and oh, cool. you know, colleges and stuff. But I would say between college sports, pro sports, probably 70, 75%. And, and, it, and it's, you know, I have some vintage cards, some packs of 91 Skybox basketball, 90 score hockey, 91 tops, just to, you know, have some, some impulse buys for the kids or whatever, three bucks a pack or something cheap. But uh, but that's, yeah, it's mostly clothing. That's so cool, though. What, um, what's the name of it? I just want to plug it in case anyone is in the LA Quiz Daddies. Quiz, quiz Daddies. Daddies. That was your thing. That was Quiz. Everybody called you Quiz Daddy when you were on the, the show. That's hilarious. Yeah, and that name evolved because it was originally uh, Quiz Daddy's Closet when I was doing I, I started it pretty much after. One of my biggest regrets, by the way, I had an audience of millions on HQ. Yeah. And I didn't do anything with it. Never promoted the yourself. Yeah, exactly. The, 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 the minute I leave... The minute I leave, I go, you know, I have all these vintage clothing that I've been collecting over the years. Maybe I should start selling it. And uh, I started the Instagram page after I left. Very, very difficult to grow that thing where you're not broadcasting in front of millions anymore. Yeah. So, um, they didn't have I, you I back on reached, like, Good Morning yeah, America yeah, to talk about it? Like 7, 000, what, what's that? They didn't have you back on Good Morning America to talk about it? Oh, no, no, no. They, That's no, stupid. No, no, no. <laughs> the press sort of dried up at around the same time. But... Uh, but Quiz Daddy's Closet became Quiz Daddy's. I just shortened it. I rebranded it. And I feel good about it. I got a shop. I opened the shop in uh, March of 22 in Santa Monica, 2525 Main Street. And it's been going well. It's supposed to be a three-month experiment. And it lasted, it's lasted 18 months now. It's going so well. The community loves it. I've regulars coming back. I've got tourists coming in and loving it. So That's so cool. You do you got to check it out when you're in L.A. Do you break out of there? I saw, like, when uh, I was watching that Trivia HQ documentary on HBO, I, at the very end, they were, like, kind of showing where you are now, and it looked like you were doing breaks in the actual storefront. Yeah, I experimented a little bit. I, I, I was working for some other breaking platforms back at the time, and what I wanted to do and what I still want to do is is create make my store or, you know, create a space where you can have athletes come hang out break, talk, sign autographs, you know, back, back in my day. And I, I assume it still happens at hobby shops where, where they still exist. They'd get athletes to come to the store as a promotional thing. You can sign out. I met Chris Mullen at a yeah. car shop in like East Chester, New York. Um, Bob, some of them, you know, you don't have to be a big name. I think like Dave Malicki, Mets pitcher, 1993, Dave Malicki was signing cars. I'm like, sure. I was nine years old. I'm going to go see Dave Malicki and get an autograph. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, <laughs> First Dave Malicki reference on the pod, by the way. That's a, it's a Easter shame. Eggs and Malicki. It took almost there's three your, years. There's your name of the pod today. Easter Eggs and Malicki. Go spell Dave. Try spelling Dave Malicki. <laughs> I'm, I'm on it. And, and, and by the way, great immaculate grid player, Dave Malicki. He bounced, oh. he bounced around a, a fair amount. Wow. Okay, so I have I, I will say I have sworn off immaculate grid. Oh, you don't? Because oh. you get them all wrong? I suck <laughs> at immaculate grid. Oh, I'm really good at it. I just Google everything, and I find it really fast. So, yeah. You're yeah. Doing, yeah you're I don't a good like you're a good person. It. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So you, you have no integrity. Got, but, Just none. But I want to bring, but to, to close the loop on that. Sorry. I wanted to bring. You know, I had like athletes. I met a guy who rep some 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 Rams players and some 
I guess Yency Almonte on the Dodgers came by one time and we kind of did a little break chasing the player's rookie card from whatever it was. I think we had two two Atwell on the on the Rams and we broke like 20, 20 score or twenty twenty one score, whatever it was. And then we hit his card. He'd sign it live. Oh, that's and cool. We gave, you know, yeah, it's pretty yeah, it was cool. cool, man. And that's chat him up, cool. you know. So I want to I want to do that with Fanatics Live is, is my plan now. We're working on it. Um, so what are any future plans for Fanatics Live that you're involved with at this point? Oh my gosh, so many. Yeah. So many. Can you so, break you know, some news? Nick Bell, yeah, break I something. I Nick Bell. He was a little tight-lipped on it. Yeah, Nick uh, is a little bit. Here's the deal with he Nick. He said, though, when we had you on, you could say whatever you yeah, wanted, he, and it was here's okay. Here's the problem with Nick. A right. little, little too well-spoken, a little too media-trained for my liking. <laughs> you like to find someone who's going to let something slip. I want somebody who's going to say a few things they're not supposed to. Yeah. He didn't even laugh at any of my inappropriate jokes. There was nothing. <laughs> yeah, it was really he weird. He the CEO. I know. He is the CEO. You got to respect know. the CEO. Not to mention at 16, he's doing stuff like more than any of us ever. Like literally just oh, know, yeah. exits from companies. I was like at 16, <laughs> I was at Papa Gino's. So anyway, I mean, that's the thing. The guy, the guy's absolutely brilliant and his resume is, is just sparkling. And, and the team he's brought in, because I'm not supposed to mention other platforms. Okay. I will say I've worked for some other platforms. You can name them. It's okay. We name names here. No, that's fair. I, I, that's fair. I, I'll just say I've worked for two others in the space. Okay. okay. And I can tell you you know, from my personal experience, that the teams that they had around sports cards specifically just did not know anything about sports cards. I love right? that. I mean, like, yeah. like, like those those apps were not built right. yep. for breaking. They were not built for sports cards. Built by tech people. So, by tech people who, who yeah. liked Funko Pop. Yep. You know, or, or whatever. So, I mean, so, so like at some point you go, well, I mean, why did they even get into sports cards? Well, I guess they saw the money being made and it was kind of an opportunistic thing. Like, let's yeah. jump in there and do it. But they truly... The people at the top just don't know anything about it. Or, I mean, I'm sure they've learned over time by now, but at the beginning. So what's what's amazing about Fanatics Live is this is an app that, you know, Nick has brought together a team. First of all, it's in Fanatics, like just bought tops and all, all, all that collectibles, you know, business involved with it. But these are people who are passionate about cards, who actually know cards, who know breaking. It's you know, our little catchphrase, which is a little cliche. It's like built for breaking by people who know breaking, right? And it's and that's what I'm, I'm so excited about. And that's where the potential is because We've already seen like the, the people we've onboarded, the breakers we've onboarded, the partners we have, and, and they're giving us feedback. And, and our feedback loop is so tight where they say, hey, you know, it'll be great. Like this other app doesn't do this for us. We want it, we want it on this app. And boom, we make it happen for them. And we've seen such incredible growth. That's over, cool. I mean, really, we've only been live for about a month, I think. Like we've – yeah. well, less, if you think about it. What, the National was three weeks ago? Yeah, well, you know, less, I, I – mean, because what was the – with the All-Star game was – oh, that wasn't the actual – It was just a beta Yeah, that was yeah, like yeah. beta launch. All-Star was like the beta thing. You know, yeah, not even a month. Invite only, but, but to really – yeah, it's been, it's been about a month of being like fully, fully live. And to see the growth we've had in that month and, and, and the partners, how much money they're making, frankly, how well everybody's doing, it's really, uh, really encouraging to see. And we're just starting – you know, what my role is primarily about is coming up with kind of this original programming element. So last week was the debut, last Thursday – I debuted, speaking of Immaculate Grid, I had an idea for a show called The Immaculate Rip based on taking that day's Immaculate Grid, let's rip a box, let's fill out the grid with the cards we hit from the box. And if you hit a player that corresponds to a grid, you get a prize. Oh, you know? And then we, cool. at the end of the show, we gave out a grand prize for whoever who completed the grid, the ninth person to, 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 to fill that spot, won a whole box of cards. So Man, we did this with the vintage cool. boxes. We're going to do it on Thursday night with football, Mike. I know you're a football guy. So Thursday night, we're going to do it again with a, with a vintage football box, and we're going to give away, you know, football cards. And it's just that type of show. And by the way, it was a straight-up giveaway show. We didn't make any money on it. It's not about making money. It's about having fun, sharing the passion for it, letting people win free stuff. Who doesn't like to win free stuff? And, and uh, those are the types of shows that, that I was brought on board to kind of develop and host and curate this slate of original programming. And I've got, you know, many, many more ideas. And the team has lots and lots of ideas that we're going to start implementing uh, as we move, you know, move into the rest of the year into the beyond. That sounds really cool. It sounds like you have a lot of autonomy as far as like using your original ideas for this. Do, do you have much pushback or is it like, hey, this is my idea. We're running with it. See, I see it. it I'm getting, getting, getting a little emotional talking <laughs> about that because I, I've been on this journey now for, I mean, th really three years. And I left HQ in 2019, March 2019. So it's been like, you know, four years since I left there. But even when I was at HQ, I actually had an idea for an auction, a live auction app back in 2018. You know, I'm seeing all of a sudden I'm hosting HQ and I'm seeing the potential of live streaming. And I'm going, I've been on eBay since 1998. Okay. I'm like, if eBay 
if I can just create an app where it's eBay live with live auctions and people, I'm showing things off on screen like QVC <laughs> and, and you can bid live. Like this will be a major, major concept. Of course, you know, I actually did, I actually partnered with a guy and, and we tried to get something off the ground, but you know, it didn't really go anywhere. Look, look lo and behold, you know, other apps kind of came up and, and, and took that mant mantle. But um, I've basically been thinking about this space for years and then specifically thinking about card based shows, hobby game shows, if you can call it. Man. And, you know, I tried it at the first app I worked at. They were not, you know, they, they hired me to ostensibly do that. And then two months into my contract, they, they let me go. They wait a minute, wait them. a minute. Were you with Collectible? Is that where we knew you from? Did well, we meet Scott? I'm not Collectible, but I was, I was working for Collectible, but that, that's not even one of the companies I'm talking about. That's where I met, that's where we met Scott originally. He was hosting the trivia yeah. thing for Collectible. That's right. Wait. Oh, my God. And I didn't even recognize that. Easter egg. Insane. Boom. Okay. I don't know if that's ahead. an Easter egg. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, Scott. Sorry. Yeah, I got carried away. Oh, well, 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 that's a whole separate. Yeah, you know, Ezra Levine, I went to high school with Ezra. Great guy. What? And, and, and he, was doing, he was doing collectible. And uh, he's like, hey, you want to host some trivia shows for, for, you know, I mean, it wasn't really part of their business. That was also kind of a promotional thing. Sure. But um, it was that was super fun to do. But anyway, the other apps I worked for, you know, they, they, they sort of pivoted. They told me they were pivoting away from originals. And, and they really haven't done it since. So I guess they, they were being serious about it. They kind of focused on their platform. Yeah. Um, I went to another company and, and that started off really well. We had a studio and we were doing these live shows and I kind of created, they gave me sort of free reign and they supported me for, for the beginning. And then, it, and then I guess they sort of uh, pivoted as well. Jeez. And decided to, uh, you know, save some money and, and drop the studio. But look, I'm ending up here. And I could not be in a better situation with Fanatics with, with you know, the money they have and they're willing to invest the reach they have, the brand, you know, quality and the brand leverage they have and for them to come to me and the respect they have for me, which is really what it comes down to. And like you said, the autonomy to say, Scott, we know what you're capable of. We know what you did at HQ. You know, we know you can command these audiences. We know you're likable despite Mike, you know, yeah. maybe having some issues with you. Um, there's, <laughs> 50, maybe there's one guy in Tennessee who doesn't like you, but besides him, there's everybody else. My dad is not a fan either. Shut no, I'm up. just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 and basically they're saying, Scott, you know, we, we want to support you. We want to give you a team to make this work. And that's what they're doing. Like last week, they just said, yeah, go ahead and do it. You want to do the show? Immaculate Creative? I mean, probably half of them didn't even understand what it was. Yeah. <laughs> but they, but they, they, said, they hey, trusted. You, you believe in it? Go for it. And we did it. And it was a massive success. We had like 250 concurrence Man. watching the show for an Dang. hour and 45 minutes. And uh, and so so now all I have to do is kind of prove out slowly that these things are going to work. Yeah. Which I've started to do. And I, I'm, I'm super confident that, that this is going to be a partnership that lasts a long time. And I really couldn't be happier to be anywhere else. Okay. I, I do have like completely off the wall side question. So when you uh, Google Scott Rogowski, you still come up as comedian as well. Do you do any stand up at this point? I mean, stand up specifically, like I've done a couple shows here and there. I moved to LA two years ago, like, you know, peak pandemic pretty much. Um, Two and a half years ago. And so, you know, the clubs were not really active at the time. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, back in New York, I did a couple like rooftop shows. My buddy Sam Morell would be like, hey, you want to host? You want to you want to open for me at a rooftop? I'd be like, yeah, sure. Uh, those those were fun. But it was a weird time. man. I mean, I, I actually thought like comedy might be dying at that point. Yeah, it's um, kind of hard when people are dying it, left it, and right. To, yeah. just the COVID, she dying. was just the COVID <laughs> victims that were dying, not comedy. See? But yeah. it hit the blue hey, button again. No, I'm not going to do that. No, Michael. Okay. Cut, cut all that. All right, go ahead. So I, I sort of, I sort of, to be honest, I sort of like, you know, I, I mean, look, everybody's, you know, Sam's doing phenomenal. He's touring, selling out everywhere. Comedy certainly hasn't died. Live shows are, 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 are back. I just personally have sort of uh, focused on, on you know, the, the, the companies that I'm working for, like the tech space, because that's the thing about HQ. When I, when I joined HQ, I was doing comedy. I was doing stand-up. I was doing my live talk shows for, for 12, 13 years prior to that. And then I got this HQ gig, and I was, I was like the last guy you'd probably want, you know, in, in the tech world. Because I, I just, I didn't even have an Instagram account when I joined HQ in 2017. Didn't even have one. I, I didn't care. I don't, I didn't have Snapchat. I, I like don't, I'm not a tech guy. Sure. Like, like I don't. I don't, you know, like social media. I don't enjoy <laughs> what technology See, does. Mike's liking you, you more I'll and more. You, the guys. more he talks, the more I am really starting to fall. I'm telling you, he's a good guy. Keep it going. But, right. but, I, but I joined HQ, and then all of a sudden, I'm sort of opened up to this, this, this world that I didn't know really, frankly, existed, that people do use their phones quite frequently. <laughs> They're sort of glued to the, the live streaming aspect to it. And I saw the potential of it. And, and I guess... There, there was always this conflict at HQ, like, is this a media company? Is this a tech company? Because yeah. I came from the media world, the entertainment world. The founders came from the tech world. And that sort of tension, unfortunately, sort of spelled the demise of the company ultimately. 
But what I took away from it was I got all my friends still doing stand up, doing open mics, doing shows, you know, trying to get the late night spot on, on Fallon or Kimmel or whatever. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm making pretty good money in this tech space, getting to do my jokes. Like I, yeah. I got an HQ. I was basically doing stand up, you know, making oh, yeah. people I was laugh. Like I couldn't hear them laughing, but. But you were so witty and like your improv, your improvisational skills are so good that it's like this man has to have come from comedy. When you when I saw you on there, it's like this guy has got the confidence and what seems like the experience that he doesn't stutter. He doesn't stammer when he's in front of a camera because there's no way that could have been all scripted. Or at least I assume it wasn't. No, I mean, and it comes from the fact that I, yeah, I've been doing live performances for over a dozen years at that point. So, you know. Again, like I, I kind of, I kind of had to take a. I think part of growing up is 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 learning your strengths and just kind of figuring out, you know, a career. Because look, when I started this called comedy journey back in you know, 2005, like in college, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I didn't know what, what where was where it was going to go. Could I make a career as a stand up? You know, you start going open mics, you start meeting other comics, and you guys, you look around and you realize like, hmm, there are 45 year old guys on the same show with me as a 22 year old who don't seem to be progressing very much. There are these road dogs, they call them, guys who go to the Cleveland Funny Bone and the Ha Ha Clubs and, you know, maybe they make a couple grand a weekend or something, and but they're on the road 40 weekends a year. Man. <laughs> like, is that the life I want? I started looking around. So even back then, I started realizing, you know, if I'm going to be successful in my life and my career in this business, I got to figure it out. And that's where I first started with the talk show space. I started producing my own talk shows. I had a sports comedy show called 12 Angry Mascots. <laughs> and we interviewed Very cool. now Hall of Famer Darrell Revis was one of my guests back in 2009. No way you got Revis. Yeah. Do you know who Revis I got is? Revis in 2009. I got David Deal from the Giants. I had Chris Duhon. I, you know, you know, well, I was in New York. So a lot of like Knicks, Rangers, Jets and Giants players. Amani Toomer, Jeff Nelson from the Yankees. Um, but I was doing those shows for three years. Then I did my Running Late with Scott Rogowski show for another 10 years. So I was doing that kind of stuff. And then again, HQ came along and I had another pivot point for me when I go, I think there's some potential in this live streaming space. I think I'm pretty good at it and it, it's fun for me to do. And so I think I'm going to focus on this rather than the stand up route or even like I stopped doing my talk show at that point because I go, I'm doing this talk show. Yeah, it's fun to do, but I'm entertaining 100 people, 200 people. I'm spending 40 hours working on it and I'm promoting it and booking guests. It's like so much work, you know? Yeah. And it just it, it just came to a point where I said, like, I'm, I'm I need to kind of grow up and, and, and take a sober look at my career. And honestly, I think um, I think it's all working out. I, I couldn't be happier. I, yeah, I would have to say, take the stability in that case. Obviously, we're benefiting from it. The people in the hobby are benefiting from it, so we appreciate it. Is Snapchat the thing where the messages disappear? Is that what Snapchat is? That, that is a feature, yes. absolutely. My my daughter would view it as the picture-taking app where it just changes your face. Oh, it takes pictures, so too. Yeah, they got a lot of filters. It can be fun. I've, I've used them on you. You like them. Um, Scott, right. if you ever want to be third man in on a podcast, well, hang on a second. To Nashville, well, you, I'm just, well, well, just, I'm just a, saying. Like, just he to, why would he have to move? Well, you obviously like him. Why does he have to move though? He doesn't have to move here. Do you have any kids, Scott? I think Scott? it would work well. No kids. Oh, no, he's no, he's no, out no. on the next pod. Never mind. All right, that's fine. Yeah, we have a second pod coming. We got a new but, project coming, but you, you, no, nope. uh, yeah. procreate and we'll talk about it. Yeah, it does. It is a requirement, unfortunately. Dad pods. Are the Dad Nashville pods. sounds still around? Bro, you know the Nashville sounds. Yeah. Are you that excited about the baseball? They are still Just around. The fact that it's so weird. How are we you know getting the Nashville Sounds? I think we're getting a pro. Nah, don't. Are we not we, getting a pro everybody, team? Everybody, they talk about for years we're getting a pro I team. I thought we were getting an expansion they team here. They are a pro team. Well, well I, I mean, uh, an MLB. MLB I, level. They, they've mentioned Nashville is on the short list, Nashville or Vegas, for the next expansion team. Yeah. I don't know. It's probably be Vegas from what's going on there with the, the plans <sighs> they used to move. It's a shame. But, that place uh, should just be but Nashville, done away with. Nashville's a good sport. I got the pre by the way, Predators, really? We're gonna name a team the Predators. You know why though, yeah. right? When they were digging out the area for the stadium, they found a saber tooth tiger skeleton in the remain or like in the rubble, and that's where they got the name. You from. being serious? And yeah, the, I swear. In the mouth of that saber tooth tiger was a DVD of to catch a predator. <laughs> Yeah, and seasons one through three. And Chris like, Hansen started what? walking around. We were we like, wait a minute. The yeah, skeleton, Chris Hansen, but the this... mascot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, it, one of the com actually, we had him on. It wasn't Aaron Weber the guy, the comedian who made those joke at the Bergazzi show? Oh, uh, it was wasn't like, him. It was one of his buddies. Who, oh, he's like, yeah. it's always great being a Predators fan until you start walking around like a zoo in you know Ohio in and you're sure, I'm a Predators fan. <laughs> you're standing around a bunch of nine-year-olds. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't play as well in public. 
We love having uh, Kimmy Dean on way, here. Great. He's a Nashville guy. He's a great dude. Nate's a Mount Julia guy. Yeah, Nate's, Nate's blowing up. We had Aaron Weber on the show. Weber, I'm a fan of Weber. We've had Weber and uh, we had... Um, Dusty oh, Slay, Dusty one of my Slay, favorite which is Yeah, I wish he would get more play. He's got play. a whole podcast network there, right? I used to play basketball with Nate back in Astoria, Queens, back in the day when he was in New York. <laughs> Listen, I'm just saying, you can do the live thing from here for Fanatics. You got, we play basketball twice a week. We got over six here. You can join in on his 6 thing. 6 a.m. at East Park. We got basketball. come podcast, bro. This, this is a win-win win. You would drop me in a freaking heartbeat. I know how disloyal you are. I wouldn't are. drop you. I'm just oh, saying. I would be having, out. Obviously, we still need your knowledge, bro. You're still no, in. I, don't, I, You're I think this would be in. a perfect two-man show. Don't you dare. The Scott and Sausage Finger Show. <laughs> I got the name for you. There you go. Hey, <laughs> as as Scott, Scott and I as a team don't like when you say that to me, okay? <laughs> so we, we would Daddy, like you would to you stop like that. Sausage? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he does like Dang it, Scott, don't you do this to me. Scott, Mike all has right. a nice ring to it all of a sudden. Third man out. Um, is all Pancake right. Pantry still in business? That's going to oh, be Oh, Pancake Actually, Pantry's here? Actually, they are still in business, but they've got some rivals these days. But no no one coming down for their uh, pancake throne, that's for sure. A couple other breakfast spots that are hot. Um, also got to shout right. out Vanderbilt. I got to shout out Vanderbilt star Pedro Alvarez. Who, who graduated in like 2008, drafted by the Pirates, became an All Star. You guys probably don't remember. Oh, Pedro. That guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. You, I was going to say, I thought you were talking Francisco. Pedro Alvarez, yeah. Oh, he's an Alvarez. Alvarez. Okay. He made a couple. Overall pick. Yep. Do you and, have any of his I went to high school. I went to high school with him, by the way. So he was my he was my teammate at Horseman, which I was, has since produced uh, Harrison Bader. My little school in New York, in the, in the Riverdale section of the Bronx, for 130 years, not a single pro athlete. All of a sudden, Pedro Alvarez, who's two years younger than me, my shortstop when I'm playing first base for two years, this guy was incredible. Like this pudgy little freshman dropping 450 foot bombs, goes off to Vanderbilt, all 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 SEC, you know, uh, uh, freshman rookie of the year, all America. The I mean, the guy was like all Team USA, and then he becomes an All Star in the major leagues. So Pedro Alvarez is my guy till I die. And then Harrison Bader, now in the Yankees, came out of my high school. Too. Only reason I cared about Vandy back then, the coach. Oh, first name was Tim, Boston Corbin, guy. Tim Corbin. Tim Corbin, Boston guy. No way. Corbin, I don't, I'll be honest. Nasty. If you want to leave now, you can, Jay. We're good. <laughs> David I'll, I'll... Price. Think about this team. David Price. Sure. Okay? Uh, 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 Mike Miner was pitching on that team. J.P. Aaron Sebia, who went on to, uh, to be a catcher. They drafted like 14 guys every year. They probably still do. Well, also had a number. My, my big guy was one of my card losses, by the way. 2019. I'm going to say, check this up. J.J. Bladé. I'm going to say it was like JJ the fifth, oh, fifth overall pick or something for the Marlins. Fourth overall for Fourth the Marlins. Overall. Went to the A's. Got traded to the A's last JJ year. JJ Bleday, one of the best names in baseball. And not and, and, one, of the, and one of the worst prospects. No, I'm just kidding. He, has potential. he does have potential, but he was supposed to be the guy. But I hard know. to be the guy in Miami. I don't. Is, hard four, is he fourth overall? He's probably right. I thought he was fifth. I knew he was top five. I'm going to trust whatever uh, Scott said was right. So, yeah. Dansby He's, Swanson, first overall? <laughs> overall pick four, yeah. The Dans? Sure. He was right. He nailed it. You know, so you, you've been collecting, you said, 30 years. How old are you, Scott? 30 plus. I'm 38. Oh, yeah. You're like oh, I thought he was older than us. us. Uh, well, he is older than us. He's a year older. I my thought he was like five years old. Like 89 tops is probably my first pack of cards. So, okay, so uh, growing yeah, up, Scott, the card for you growing up, was it the Griffey? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, you know, it wasn't the card that I owned. No, I couldn't. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't afford an '89 Upper Deck Griffey. That thing um, backed in the bucket for forty bucks back then. I remember forty. Yeah. yeah, I remember me and Russ would sit around like forty. But must be nice to be rich. <laughs> Bunch of scumbags. Yeah, no chance. You know what I was excited about as a kid? And these, these are the. This was like we grew up in the junk wax era. This was like the total, especially '90, '90, '91 when Griffey came on board. Every fly by night company started producing cards, right? There was a set of cards. It was only Griffey cards, and they were all like silver foil refractors. There'd be like a gold silver foil special card. I don't know if Upper Deck made it or if some other company made it, but I collected these like I'm they're totally to think worthless now. today. Interesting. And I was so proud. So proud of these like silver foil Griffey cards. And then the one gold one I had, which was the big deal. Now, see, the A Rod was a big one for me. The 94 Upper Deck, I bought that card at a show for 15 bucks. Star rookie, 1994 A-Rod. I was pretty Star excited rookie. about it. I never had the SP, the die. Although now I bought, my buddy and I went in on a, this is one of his ideas. You know, my, I have a friend, my best friend, we collect the cards. Going, he's one of probably the top 2,000 wealthiest people in the country now. He's like, name he his name. Some, like, What's his know, name? His name's Eli. His first, first name's Eli. Put in but, Eli uh, but he's like Eli Forbes, 30 under 30. <laughs> yep. He's working in you know, a private Forbes, equity partner. <laughs> so, he, so, so, so now, now, now Eli like, messes me up every so often. He'll be like, let's, let's get an A-Rod, you know, 
SP Dicot is undervalued. He thinks he has like the values figured out. Um, so we found like a, a 10, like a BCCG 10 A-Rod oh, die God. cut SP for like 80 bucks. And he's like, let's take a flyer on it. We'll crack it and regrade it, you know? So we haven't done it yet. But of course, we bought the card. It's still sitting there. I'm looking at it, though. It's probably going to be a, a six? seven or an Yeah, eight. I was going to say oh, a, a BCCG oh. 10. Yeah, that's that thing's yeah. been manhandled. I can't yeah. find this. Did you find Eli? Eli? I found an old Eli. I can't find a <laughs> Dude, young Eli. Dude, come on. Um, this is going to have to be further research into Yeah, we'll this. find we'll it by the end of the show. We'll edit yeah. it in. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll manipulate <laughs> we'll it. come back in. Yep. Um, I, honestly, like I feel like this interview has been fantastic. I don't really, we've kind of gone over what we usually a lot for time, but uh, anything else going on that you want to talk about right now? Because I think we obviously have to have you back in the future. Yeah, I'm happy to come back. Now, all I'll say is just, Truly, I mean, I know there's a lot, of, a lot of excitement in the hobby about Fanatics Live, a lot of maybe questions about what it's going to be, what it's going to look like, how it's going to evolve. But all I'm going to say is we just had, you know, a team all hands meeting this morning, <laughs> and there's so much exciting things happening, so, so many creative people involved. Um, I'm super gung-ho, obviously, about these original programs that we're going to continue to build out. And, you know, we're going to onboard more sellers, and it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing, doing it in a, in a way, by the way, that is focused on the trust and safety that's so big for us because of the other issues we've, we're seeing out there. No, that's and, and, key. And I, I want to wrap this up quickly with a, with a question for you guys. Because I'm, I'm actually, this is a question I'm having internally with oh, members boy. of the team. Here we go. Because you're in this, and you guys are breaking too with your, with your own network, right? So we have our own live, live streaming app, Card Shop Live. We, we talked to Nick Bell. We saw, asked if he wanted to buy it early. He's going to buy it out, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it's for sale cheap, I'll tell you. We're ready yep. to merge. Okay, but go be, ahead. Be, beyond that, I mean, have you guys done any data or research into like the, the TAM, they call it, the total addressable market. I'm always trying to figure out how many people just total in the world, or maybe in America, let's give it to America, yeah. who, who, who participate in breaks on a daily basis or maybe in a weekly basis who are buying cards in that way. Like how big is this space? Where, how many people are listening to this podcast for crying out loud? You want to get let those numbers out? I mean, if we so if we have an excellent podcast, like for, for example, let me say no. If we are supposed to link those numbers, oh, so when the tables are turned, I'm just know, saying. I'm just saying. Tight -lipped. I'm just Okay, I, but the fact that we don't, don't get those numbers on a daily basis we have, means that they probably don't want those numbers leaked. Everywhere. That's not my concern. So, like, if we have Simmons on the show, major guest, right, comes on, yeah. uh, we make some, or there's a, or even just like if there is a headline, we'll crack top fifty, top hundred in sports, which in general, this is just generic numbers, by the way, top fifty. They said for a while there, back when we were doing it, like twenty to thirty-five thousand for that episode, for an episode like that. So, right. but that's, so let's let's say an average is fifteen or whatever, right? Sure, fifteen thousand. That's a, that's fifteen thousand dedicated people who are listening to your podcast about sports cards. You have to figure that this is like the demo, right? If you care about sports cards, you're listening to this podcast. Um, that's fifteen thousand people. Like, and all things considered, it's not that many people. It's a tiny number. Right? And when, you, when you think of how many sports fans there are, hundred million people watch the Super Bowl. Absolutely. You figure there may be two hundred million sports fans in this country, right? Two fifty, maybe. Sure. If you count soccer, maybe it's everybody. I don't. Um, <laughs> but but uh, <laughs> but so the Fanatics Live mission and what we're trying to do is like, how do we get those sports fans who who watch the games, who maybe bet on the games, who kind of engage with the athletes and these games in every way but cards? How do we convert them to become collectors in this space to grow your podcast? our platform, everybody would grow if we can get more people in, right? So that that's sort of the 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 the, the nut we're trying to crack. Um, I start to I wonder Fanatics, if it's possible by the way, sometimes. I think Fanatics, because they have, you know, the Mitchell Ness and the Lids and, and, and the, the Tops, like they have such a reach with the apparel and everything else. Like people interact with Fanatics more than they probably do with, with sports cards. So oh, if get absolutely. Fanatics buyers, yeah. get Fanatics buyers to come into the sports card vertical, now we're in business. And, that, and that's, and that's, that's the mission. That's what we're excited about. That's why Michael Rubin keeps saying we want to 10x the space. And listen, if Michael Rubin uh, says it, you know, we, we can do it. I mean, I believe there's a there's a world. I don't know how fast we can do it. I've started to get a little more skeptical on how, how fast that takes. And if we're talking about U.S. or you're talking worldwide, but there's obviously... Right. What I think we've seen more and more on social media lately, the like the popularity in some of the uh, Asian countries where you're seeing a lot of guys breaking product. Finally getting access to Yeah, wax. they're getting access yeah. and breaking product over there, which I find very, very interesting. And then when we're doing like these live NFT breaks on our own YouTube stuff, you got guys from like uh, Norway, Ireland, uh, I think it was like Singapore, multiple people just, and there's only 200 people in this break, but you had all these people from 
around the world getting in on these. It's, it is kind of crazy. And I think you're to your point, who has those numbers? I would love to know. But uh, if if there is something fanatics can do, I, I'd be very curious to hear what ideas they have, because I also think that there's almost like a brick wall where you get so far and then interest kind of just falls off. Like there is a, uh, a peak of interest until I don't know what you have to be like. You have to be a complete dedicated sports nut to have a uh, a chance of being a card collector. But if you aren't going to every game, you're not following a player, you're not going to get into the card world. I, I don't know where that separation in fan to hobby enthusiast is, but it does seem like there is a wall somewhere where you cannot get them to cross over, at least in the last two years of watching the hobby. So I could be, I, I, say, I, I hope I'm wrong. I know we're out of time. I will say this. Let's, 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 schedule another episode maybe we have a town hall symposium on this very topic we can get like sports fans who don't collect we get collectors we can get very people together and really figure it out like what is the barrier what is that wall you're talking about because i, I agree with you there there is friction to get those people to convert let's crack this nut guys let's figure it out in the meantime did we just create one of the most popular episodes we will ever have coming up the town hall in the meantime let's go ahead and in the next team meeting card Who's shop Eli? live Card Shop Live, a fantastic little live streaming app, would be a <laughs> heck of an addition to Fanatics, to Fanatics Live. Live. Yeah, absolutely. Comes absolutely. with a nice little spokes voice in the hobby. All right, so Whew, three, bring it back to the team. three things we, we're taking away from this, or you need to take away from this, Scott, is, of course, buy out our app. Yep. Um, tell us who Eli is. And get Android access to Fanatics Live. I am over it okay <laughs> that's all i'm saying you know how expensive it is to build an app uh, don't ma 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 matter of fact we have mr. an idea <laughs> mr i throw out an idea for a new show and now we got it creating stuff back in i want android that's all i'm saying we have hey, android for card shop was ios hq was ios only for the first six eight months i mean it takes time it's coming I we have coming. android for card shop live that fanatics live could get this that's true it not is to mention there. they've stolen great, a bunch they've also good. stolen a bunch of our other ideas to their credit <laughs> but they can get it they can get android I'm i have just, i have faith in their bankroll i believe in you that's all i'm saying go talk right, to nick you're gonna Bell. roast me i'm gonna end with a final roast for you guys Please. change the name of this thing this bothers me to know of end. what sports cards sports card Sports card no, license. don't that you S, dare. That S kills Stop. Me. You're putting it's it in so people's minds. You are infecting people's minds as we no speak. No one calls sports it sports cards, cards nonsense. nonsense anyways. Everybody calls it card. <laughs> That's why he wants us to change it. No, it's too late. We can't. <laughs> Rebranding would take forever. Oh, well, don't you, you dare. Just, you just delete a little the red S. paint. A little red paint is all it takes. <laughs> That's what you have to do. <laughs> and expand the font Sheesh. just a little bit. All right, thank you. That's 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 good critique. Uh, Scott Rogowski, Fanatics Live. Thank you, Scott. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining. We can't wait for the town hall and other future episodes where you'll be joining us, third man. Uh, this was a pleasure. Thanks again. You got it. All Don't right. close your browser. Don't close your browser. Do your thing. Um, hey, when you uh, when you leave. By the way, thank you. That was awesome, man. Very, very, very great. Um, before you leave. Just hit the leave button. Don't close your browser out. The right. thing that we're in like uploads all your audio and video and stuff, and it takes a second. First split second, I thought I was like, hey, I'm before, familiar with it. He's like, hey, before oh, I you leave. know, see, we're dealing with professionals. He's like, hey, before I leave, just one other quick thing. F you, Mike. <laughs> He's like, I he hate you, Mike. He just deletes. Oh, yeah. that would have been such a baller move. <laughs> and I'm not uploading my audio. <laughs> oh, God, I would have set up a gift card to my mother's dinner. Oh, man. Uh, what yeah. a treat. We're, we're, we're all, everything's good, guys. We're all, we're all friends now. Enjoyed it, man. Thank I you. Love it. All, All right. right. I'm going to text you later. Yeah. We'll just talk about stuff. Okay. Right. Please don't. <laughs> I'm doing it too late. <laughs> Please don't. Oh. Oh. There you go. That was Scott. By the way, you didn't hear this off air. No, Jesse put goes, that in. Jesse Eddie goes, I'm gonna, yeah, Jesse goes, I'm going to text you later. He goes, Please don't. <laughs> that was the sound of a, of a man who just does not want to hear from you. I only text him like three or four times we, a day. We can be done. That was like a high ending to mm -hmm. end on. It was a good show, well rounded. We're not going to, yeah, let's just be done there. That's let's, right. Let's call it. Yeah, That's yeah. Good. yeah.